Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, we're gonna talk about grafting. We're not gonna teach you how to graft, just some um, basics of grafting. Uh, I'm with Jason Stevens from Superior Plants. And uh, we're, what Jason's working on right now is some Tokyo Tower Cayenanthus, or it's a Chinese fringe tree, but it's a particular named cultivar that's upright and narrow. Right. 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 Okay. So, and this is one of my most popular trees that I grow. And the reason I graft them is they're nearly impossible to root. Right. Um, so, so what we have here is uh, Chinese fringe tree seedlings, Cynanthus yeah. retusus. Yeah. And, uh, and this is the regular one. It gets 25 feet wide. It's really, feet. yeah, really big and broad, <laughs> right. Um, right. spreads. Um, right. And there's a few different cultivars um, that have been selected for different reasons. But right. Tokyo Tower has a different growth habit than the typical uh, which Chinese is kinda, French Which is kind of upright and narrow. Yeah, they call it fastidiate. Right. So, I mean, it, right. the... I'm sure Jim's got some pictures of some. Uh, yeah, we have one in our back garden. And, the, and what's what's neat about him doing this is everywhere we go where they're selling Tokyo Tower kind of answers, I'm like, I bet you got those from Jason. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like you start Chances up. Chances are, I mean, if it's regional, um, yeah. they, they, they came from me or they started here at some point. Right. Um, but anyway, I'm going to just kind of go through this um, to show you how I do it. Um, okay, perfect. All right, so first thing I do is I'll go through and I'll just cut. I do one tray at the time, so I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. So how did you, how did you start these? These are these are seedling. Yeah, so these are, are seedlings um, that I uh, I grow for a year. So the rootstock is going to be a year old when the scion, which is the cutting from Tokyo Tower is, is put on. And uh, I'll show you uh, growth of these uh, after one year. Um, I've got some plants. Um, this is a one quart, um, and the ones that take, that grow off well, will go into a two gallon pot, and then they'll be sold this fall. Um, I'll just go through it though. I, I like to, uh, I do cleft grafts, so, um, I basically just nub the plants off. I want to cut it as low as I can to the soil level, but not so low I don't have anything to work with. But uh, it's a pretty simple process. It's time consuming though. Um, you know, it, it, it kind of becomes muscle memory the more you do it. Um, so I just make a cut somewhat in the middle of the, uh, the nub there. And then I take my Cyan wood, which is just the whole cutting right here, um, and I like to do the uh, the tips. Um, this this because this terminal bud is going to just shoot right up, um, and it's going to be almost a seamless uh, heel on the plant when it uh, starts to callus and, and grow together. All right, so here's your Scion. This is your Tokyo Tower. Do you have to get two that are kind of similar size? As as close as you can. Um, I'm, yeah. Depending on the plant that you're grafting, I mean, some things like Japanese maples are not very forgiving, mm -hmm. so they need to be as close to uh, equal size as possible. Right. Um, and cleft graft is probably not the best graft for like Japanese maples. Um, Chinese fringe tree, uh, taxodium, uh, metasequoia, they have a really thick cambium layer, so they're much more forgiving. But uh, so the scion, I just want to make a V cut on it. Um, it's about like that. Uh, the more you do it, the better you'll be able to, uh, you know, get a, a really V cut. Um, but what I do is I'll just take this and slide it down in this plant about like that. And I want to make sure I, I line up the cambium at least on one side. Um, the more you do it, the more you get in a rhythm, you'll be closer to doing it on both sides. You can see maybe on this side it's not as equal, but on this side it's there is perfect. Um, 
and this is where it'll start healing on this side. So you do that. These are uh, budding grafting rubbers. It's basically just like a rubber band um, and it seals the wound and just keeps everything tight together until you start getting growth out of the top. And I want to wrap it to where I completely seal all open wound or cuts or anything like that. That's pretty much all there is to it. Now, the advantage of doing a terminal bud like this is I don't have to put any sealer or anything like that to keep the scion from, from drying out. Um, I'll go through real quick and show you a subterminal graft, which is basically the whole same process. I just have to do a little extra work to it in the end. So, so these are the same species, uh, so both Kyanthus retusus, one just as a named named cultivar. One's, Can, a, one's a named cultivar. It's, it, it's, it's obviously much easier with the same species. Or is it, are things grafted though that aren't the same species? So yeah, I, I can, uh, I've had pretty good success grafting the American French tree, which is Cyanthus virginicus, onto Retusus understock. So all my understock is Chinese French tree. Yes. Um, so, so some of the other reasons, I mean, obviously t Tokyo Tower is very hard to root. And so you get a much higher percentage grafting it onto the regular Chinese fringe tree rather than trying to root it. If you tried to root them as, as cuttings, you'd get a very small percentage, right? Correct, yeah. So, I, I mean, and I have tried to root them and uh, I just didn't get, you know, less than 10%. So it's, it's really, there's a lot of effort to stick a tray of cutting just one tray yes and then, i mean if you're trying to do a thousand i mean that's real time consuming and you got to right. have the plants to get the cuttings off of so grafting i'm gonna get over 90. i mean I, I, with these i would say over 95 percent right. take on them. so they're, they're going i know i'm gonna get you know the fruits of my labor um right so you'll see blue spruce grafted onto Norway spruce because blue spruce is much harder to root and that kind of thing, right? You'll see, you, you, that's what you're... That's yeah, you're and it, it, it really depends on, you know, what, what the, I mean, there's different reasons to graft plants. Um, sometimes it's just uh, maybe the, the top, the, what, the plant that you're trying to produce, maybe it does root, but it just doesn't make a good healthy root system right um, so you're, you're you're putting it onto a superior root stock right that, a lot of times in the citrus industry that's what they're doing on yeah but this was a uh, sub terminal cutting so I mean uh, depending on you know my availability on how much bud wood I can get I would prefer to do them all like this but mm -hmm. sometimes that's just not possible just to get my numbers where they need to be so I have to do sub terminal cuttings and you see this, there's four buds on here. Um, uh -huh. When it starts growing, you'll get a kind of a hook in them where they'll, they'll grow out and then up. So right. you have to do some training to get that trunk straight again. But the extra labor in these is sealing the, the top cut. Okay, um, gotcha. Where so you had the terminal one, you didn't have to steal the top, but this right. one is a, uh, yeah, right. So it, it's, you need to seal that. So everything was the same except for this wasn't the terminal tip of the branch. Correct. Right. And uh, that's the only time I use, in a cle doing cleft grafts, that's the only time I use this is on the top of a subterminal scion piece. So you're going to get branch left and a branch right. One of them's got to come off and the other one will get become, right. have to be straightened out as the, into the... Exactly. And in, in most cases with a terminal like this, it's just going to shoot straight up. These laterals are going to come out, but they're not going to be dominant. Sometimes maybe... You know, I won't say it's, this is, you know, maintenance free for as sometimes that one of those laterals can become dominant. Right. Um, so, I mean, there's still 
this is just the beginning of the grafting process. There's a, there's a lot of aftercare. Um, you know, as far as watering, these, uh, they basically don't get any water um, until I start to see growth. Um, and you start to see the buds, you know, popping out. You start to see green buds coming out or whatever. Then I'll, I'll do a light watering on them um, just to kind of get them going. But if you water them heavy, um, you can drown it, you can drown the graft, because I mean, it, what it is, I mean, these cambium layers, uh, these plants are forming a union, and uh, you know, if you overwater it and you're flushing too much water through the, the root system, you know, and it's trying to push it all up to the top of the plant, and it can only take so much, and it'll just rot and not take, so. Um, you probably but, don't want to get water in the actual place of the Yeah, there. you don't. So, uh, and, and and you won't if you seal it um, correctly with with the budding rubber. Or if it was a different kind of graft, like a side veneer or you know something like that, you would need to put some sealer within the uh, actual. I mean, so I'll in another video I'll show you like a side veneer and uh, show you the disadvantages of it compared to a cleft graft but like i said um, depending on the plant that you're grafting maybe a savonier is the uh, most effective graft. You, you'll see the tree growers where they're growing out in the field they'll grow their understock in the ground and then they'll come and do the side yeah bud. yeah they'll do like a side veneer or whatether or maybe they do some like tea budding or something tea budding, like right that. right um, yeah they'll just plug it right into the plant that's already existing in the field but this is uh so i i figured out the system as far as growing these and cleft graft works the best i mean it, it reduces some of the steps that you have to take when you do a different graft like uh, side veneer um, and I've just applied this to some other different uh, genus like uh, taxodium, metasequoia. I actually started doing pawpaws um, uh, last year uh, with pretty good success on, on, on that technique with them. Alright so next I'm going to show you how I do some uh, taxodium um, the first one I'm going to show you is uh, Cascade Falls, which is a, a weeping form of the native uh, bald cypress. Right. Um, and, and the understock on these are all seedlings. Um, you can see right here is four seedlings. And mm -hmm. my crop of seedlings I can usually divide into two different sizes, two different sizes based on caliper. Right. So these, the ones that have the bigger caliper, Mm -hmm. I put the weeping uh, Cascade Falls on because I do a high graft on them. Yeah. The ones that have the smaller caliper, I do the cleft graft down low like I did the Tokyo Tower uh, fringe trees and do a uh, cultivar. Um, Jim's Little Guys is one I do a lot of. That's mm -hmm. just a uh, somewhat of a semi-dwarf uh, selection that grows right. real dense. But. But the reason you're going to graft the weeping one up here is it wouldn't make any sense to have it weeping from down there. Yeah, so right. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be staked. And uh, yeah. another reason, too, is I mean, these, the caliper here, to do a cleft graft down here, yeah. it, it, I mean, it's a, it's a bigger wound than, than you want to uh, have to deal with. Right. So, um, awesome. The high grafts, um, I don't do them on the table. Uh, do them on the ground but anyway the first thing I do is clean off all lateral branches sometimes you can just snap them off with your hands sometimes you have to cut them but get that clean and then I'll tip it where I want to do the cleft graft um, this is my scion wood of Cascade Falls and uh, as you can see I mean it's long I cut it up into probably three inch pieces but if you look closely as I cut it up 
I made this little notch on the bottom end of it so I know what the bottom is. Um, if you graft it upside down, it's not going to take. Um, but you can see there, there's, if you look on that side, I mean, there's no way to tell, you know, what's up and down. Maybe if you look closely, you can see some difference or whatever, but I mean, it's, it's easier just to put a, put a little notch on one side to know what the bottom is. But I'll go through and cut that whole stem up into however many cuttings I'll, I want to get off of that piece. That's my bottom. Slide it in there, make sure I line one side up. That side's not, not what I want it to be, but I can line one side up and know I'll get pretty good success there. And then with these, these are all subterminal uh, graph, subterminal uh, sign wood, so I'm gonna have to put that on every one of those. But the uh, the take percentage on on, on these tax sodium in general is is pretty high. I mean, I'm I'm over ninety percent, so. Uh, you need to be of, with this much effort. I mean, this is a yeah, lot, yeah, it's a lot, this of, is a effort. lot of effort to get to this moment. And, you know, I, it, I, I went through it pretty slow just trying to show, but, you know, when you get in here and you get in a rhythm, maybe turn on your favorite podcast and just, you know, your muscle memory comes into play and you just go. Right. Um, I, I try to do, I like to do, uh, so we're in the first week of January. I like to be finished up um, definitely by mid-March. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to do 500 a week. Um, right, and that's with all your other whatever things. And that's with right. running the nursery <laughs> at the same time. So, right. um, you know, if, if I can do 100, 150 a day, um, you know, I, I'm, but, but I'm thought, meeting my thought goal. But thought went to this. I mean, you have to be thinking about next year's grafting. Oh yeah, I mean, time. I have so to. Would... I, so as I'm grafting, I've, I've got to be lining up my root stock for next year at the same time. And, right. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot, a lot that goes into it um, as far as preparation, and uh, and then making it, making it happen. So not everything could probably be done in January like this. I mean, some of it's probably I mean, no. So uh, yeah, there's some things that uh, I mean, this is pretty early. I mean, uh, in general, you like to do it like just before bud break, right. just because I, got you. I, got you. Um, I mean, the grass can dry out. Um, and we're filming this like the first week of January. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you know, French tree, taxodium um, are are ones that that I can start, you know, first right. week of January. All right, so this is uh, taxodium uh, understock that I'm gonna do a uh, low cleft graft onto, and the uh, variety I'm putting on is Jim's little guy, and this is it. Um, I can't do terminal uh, bud scion just because look how thin it is. Um, so I have to do subterminal. And like I did with the uh, Cascade Falls, I make a little notch to know where my bottom is on them. Yeah, hold that up for just a second. Yeah. Beautiful.
Taxate him, to stitch him. Jim's a little guy. Thank you very much because we've wanted to get somebody on at some point just to talk through the how and the why of, you know, there pe folks are buying lots of grafted plants and don't necessarily know the process or the, the process know. or even the reason why, why, right. why something becomes more economical even with this much effort, uh, right. you know, uh, fr from that. And then, you know, I, I know that like if you had a, a, an apple orchard, you can take the whole trees down and they'll they'll just bark they'll you know right you know they'll bud yeah. them right to the you know on a stump uh and grow and grow new trees there's a lot of reasons uh that that, that something would be that something would be grafted so this is a one-year-old tokyo tower so right after one year um this is what i just did um mm -hmm. and and they'll start growing they'll get up about that tall and we'll put them in two gallons and that's Right. Basically, how they'll finish. And you can after you can year. see that little V that Jason created a year ago on that one, and that you just saw him create. And so, in one year, uh, it went from what we got about two feet of growth, a little more. Yeah, two uh -huh. two to three. I mean, and this right. is pretty average. Um, right. Sometimes they they won't put as much height, but they'll do a lot of lateral branching. Right. But um, this graph looks great. I mean, you can hardly tell. You really have to examine that. To know yeah, I mean, graph. you can see a different color in the bark. Right, um, but you have, you know, you'd really have to look for it. So here's here's the reason you did the the weeping tree as a high graft. Yeah, so this is the Cascade Falls uh, weeping bald cypress, and uh, this is the one I did just a few minutes ago, and then a year later. So again, um, you can see that little V. You see the V right here. Right there. And you can see so this little notch in it that is what you're always going to get. Um, I mean, this is really best case scenario in a subterminal piece of cyan wood. Um, right. I trained it pretty early, um, uh -huh. so it was more flexible. But something like that, if it was to be trained now, it, it could you break. You can see it could yeah. break, but it's also going to have that. Right. You have to get it really early. Yeah. Yeah. When it's yeah. You see that on his weeping red buds too. If you wait any length of time, uh, they're unwilling. And this is the uh, Jim's little guy taxodium. Um, as you can see, there's the graft. There's the uh, sealant that I put on last year. Um, then you got about two feet of growth. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. I think people will get a lot out of this. Again, it's uh, so much of this is experience. Like you didn't get this, you know. Yeah, I mean, know. there was a lot of, uh, you know, trial and error. Right. Um, You'd rather root it. I would rather root, yeah, everything. <laughs> right. um, You'd rather root it. So this is a process of not only figuring out that you can't root it, but then figuring out how to graft it, when right. to graft it. Yeah, and an right. efficient way to uh, get consistent uh quantities right um whatever you know that target is right and then that that the graft work i mean you're planting one and you're seeing it for some period of time you know that it works right 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 and it's vigorous yeah right. yeah so yeah so uh, one big difference between uh rooting cuttings and grafting is as soon as this plant starts to grow the root stock on it is at least a year old right yeah. so it's going to it's going to really push hard uh, much faster vigorous growth than a, a rooty cutting the same age right that has to go through the process of creating a one gallon root system or a three right. gallon root system right. or whatever so well awesome thank you jason